We're just a few days away uh, from the beginning of the month of Ramadan, where Muslims across the globe, as well as in Palestine, and in particular in Gaza, will try their best to observe the month of Ramadan while facing a genocidal war uh, that is about 145 days and counting, uh, with over 32,000 uh, Palestinians in Gaza being killed by the Israeli uh, Defense Force. Uh, and uh, the casualties are increasing almost to 100,000 plus. 70% of the buildings and homes have been destroyed. And literally there is famine where people are dying as a result of lack of food, water, electricity, and uh, the assault on the uh, hospitals, the medical infrastructure. But that's not my point today for this conversation with you. Many, in particular in the Western world, uh, are taking this opportunity. I'm speaking about Muslims in particular, but also others, uh, under the dubious claim of engaging in interfaith dialogue, are beginning to plan to host uh, these interfaith dialogue, where none other than um, your local uh, Zionist organizations and individuals uh, who are invited. Uh, to, uh, to really speak and engage in interfaith dialogue. So let me be very clear. If a person and an organization uh, continue to oppose uh, unconditional ceasefire uh, in Gaza, uh, they have no business in attending an interfaith dialogue with uh, Muslims, Arab, Palestinians, no matter what the claim is, no matter what type of nice person they are. Again, if you don't support unconditional ceasefire, uh, you have no business in celebrating uh, or having an interfaith gathering with the Muslim Palestinian Arab population. Second, if you have happened to continue to support uh, Israeli military attacks on the Palestinians, if you say uh, or shared information and uh, material saying that uh, to wipe Gaza off uh, the face of the earth, if you continue to support Netanyahu and his government, if you said that there is no uh, innocent civilians in Gaza or that the Palestinians in Gaza are, be, are human shields, uh, you have no business in trying to come and observe Muslims breaking their fast and continue to uh, un engage in so-called interfaith. There is no interfaith uh, if you completely are dehumanizing and extending the dehumanization of the Palestinians. Third, if you happen to continue to support the restrictions of access to food, of medicine, of uh, opening uh, access uh, of the borders to the Palestinians, or claiming that uh, Israel has the right to defend itself by continuing to lock the Palestinians up in Gaza, you have no business in being invited or participating or joining in any type of activity under the uh, dubious, atrocious claim of interfaith dialogue. Fourth, if at any point you supported the silencing, the uh, doxing, uh, the uh, targeting of Palestinians or pro-Palestinian activists or calling them these are Hamas supporters or making the connection that they are ISIS and ISIS is Hamas and ISIS is the Palestinians. If you are that type of person or your type of, your type of that organization that on the one hand speak in interfaith uh, generality and public discourse while specifically continue to engage in the demonization and the doxing directly and indirectly, you have no business of being part of the so-called interfaith gatherings to break an iftar. We could do without adding another hummus plate for a person that continues to demonize the Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslims. Fifth, if you happen to continue to actually promote Islamophobic content, to literally speak of the Arab, Palestinians, Muslims, speak of the Gaza population in some of the most uh, 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 despicable racist framing. Again, animals, barbarians, uh, um, you know, these are from throwback to civilization. We need to defend Western civilization. If you have any of that as an individual or as an organization, as well as projecting some of these uh, voices that come out and speak 
uh, in those way. There is no uh, need for you or your organization to participate in interfaith dialogue and interfaith gathering for the month of Ramadan. More importantly to Arab, Muslims, Palestinians, you have to have the dignity to understand what does genocide look like and means at this point and no amount of interfaith washing, no, no amount of interfaith work to open circles of power and influence, uh, no amount of such a public relations should actually make you go on down that path to think that you could actually address and help the Palestinians. Palestinians are telling you there is a genocide taking place and there is a very specific way that you actually express your solidarity, your support, not only with Palestinians because they're Palestinians, not because Palestinians happen to be majority Muslim with actually Christian populations in Palestine, not because you are, because actually this is what moral, ethical standing is all about at this particular time. So interfaith washing, uh, interfaith iftars during, during the month of Ramadan, while literally a genocide is un and underway, uh, this is actually almost flipping the purpose of Ramadan on its head. It is the utmost uh, insult to, to the Palestinians, to Muslims, Arabs, and all these love, peace and justice loving people to actually use the month of Ramadan as a way to, pre to push through uh, these uh, uh, relationship with individuals and organizations that have specifically, intentionally, and unequivocally uh, express their uh, support of Israeli policy and continue the demonization of Arab Palestinians, Muslims at this per particular time. There is no need to break your fast by being silent, either explicitly or tacitly, and engage with those that continue to cheerlead for the genocide of the Palestinians. Know exactly what is taking place. And this is not the, this is the moment that we need people to be very clear of where they stand. Either you are with those who are cheerleading the genocide, or you stand on the principle of justice and you actually express this unequivocally. Thank you.